types of music. Um, you know, if you were to put it into something more modern, it could be, you know. Won't be silent, won't be silent, not oh, for one more day. Exactly why I called you. You realize <laughs> that, right? It's an honor to have worked on this and just I, I feel so honored that you asked me to do it because this is so important. But the whole reason I think we met was for this. Oh, it wasn't for any of those definitely. things. Definitely. It oh, was for this no, moment. This is, yeah. It was I like agree. I'm to so unearth this and put it back into the universe in a way that would be relevant for people today. When I first heard the song, it was the harrowing quality of the melody. It was just, emotionally, it just, it hit me as this bittersweet moment, you know, and it was just very eerie. I mean, I think this whole thing is a collaborative effort. I think it started with you finding out about your uncle, unearthing the song, bringing it to someone like me to interpret it, and kind of us discussing what that song would look like today. What your uncle did in terms of really creating a piece of music that allowed people to fight, yeah. you know, to, to fight back. And, and that's really what it was. They had no power. Yeah. He gave them some power. Right. It's really about building community. I mean, I think that's what Wolf did. He built a community inside of a horrible, a horrible yeah. place. Yeah. But the fact that everyone could, yeah. could talk to each other through this piece of music and be there to support each other is really what this is about and it's really what music is about. The story... It's haunting. And I was just going to say that it's, it's, it's haunting. It is. So, I don't want people to feel haunted by this now. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is giving it a place of comfort. The way you wrote the words, bring it into this place of hope, which was the essence of what I wanted to do. It's the only way I wanted to give my uncle a legacy. I really listened to those words and, and I tried to keep it in the sort of vernacular, the everyday vernacular that he had written when you looked at the translation which was stay silent. You know, right. It was kind of like an, a list of instructions of how you should conduct yourself. Um, and it, he almost wrote it as if he was a leader as opposed to a conductor, you know, where he was saying, this is what you need to do, people. You need to stay silent, as if he was, was speaking to them. I wanted the song to give whoever is singing it some power because I think for the Holocaust and for the people that were in that ghetto, they had no power. So in that moment, they could hold on to something that was theirs and that made them feel in control. And so I just felt a connection to this composer who was trying to put something out into the world that would help people. We would never say, be silent. Never. And he wouldn't want us to say that now. No. I think that the whole idea of not speaking out, of not being strong enough to tell your side of the story or what you believe in is a very scary thing. Won't be silent, won't be silent, not for one more day. We'll speak out to future generations, we'll be saved. We won't close our eyes and fear and hide.